do, 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 do. Ah, uh. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, oh, um, work, yeah. The business value of RSA Archer Training, or how do I get a return on my investment quickly? By me, Peter Hunt. So, training obstacles. Quite often, it's just not budgeted for. Or usually, it's just so low down on the list of priorities that you have that it's often the first object on the quote to be removed or, or severely limited just to save uh, the overall cost of the project. Also, uh, common objections that we get is that it's too expensive, uh, it's time consuming, it's unnecessary, or the biggest one is, I don't learn that way. So let's look at these objections one at a time. The first objection, it's too expensive. Avoiding training is a uh, big false economy. All right, let me tell you a story. When I was a small child, when I was five, we lived in Germany. My father was a soldier in the British Army. And uh, we were stationed overseas in a, in a city called Osnabrück, part of the British Army on the Rhine. And, you know, um, back then, back in the 70s, the wages were terrible. And... Um, we saved, we saved and saved and saved and saved because we could now get access to tax free goods uh, from the, um, the the British version of the commissary, the PX. And we bought a, a VCR, a VHS player. It was very expensive, but it was a game changer. It, it meant that we could rent videos from that weird little van that drove around the communities. Uh, with this little back door that would open up and you could, you could rent films. Uh, Cannibal Run and Smokey and the Bandit, and um, my parents sat me down, they showed me how to use the thing, they had, how to uh, work the tracking when the tracking was out, uh, how to tune it in, they showed me how to take care of cassettes and how to handle them properly, uh, they showed me how to uh, run the cleaning tape through, uh, that was my job, I had to do that once a month, and uh, you know, this, this thing lasted us a very long time, in fact, when I was 14 and, and living back in the UK, my, my father was posted to a regiment stationed in the UK. Uh, our house was burgled when I was 14 and uh, they stole the TV, the VCR and the hi-fi system. And uh, had they not, the, the VCR would still be going strong, I imagine, right up until DVDs were invented. Um, but um, Carl's parents, my friend who lived across the hallway in our tower block, uh, he, uh, his parents wouldn't, wouldn't show him. He, he was told that he had to stay away from it at all times. And, um, they were very, very cross with Carl because, um, after about a week of getting this new thing, um, it had army men stuck in the uh, tape bay and, uh, a jam sandwich of all things. Absolutely destroyed the thing. Um, so that meant uh, training from my parents uh, would lead to safe use, uh, longevity of the device. It repaid us. It repaid us with a long and faithful service. And had it not been stolen, probably still, still more so. But refusing to show Carl how to use the VCR resulted in a shorter mean time between failure uh, with the additional unbudgeted cost of replacing the unit sooner than anticipated. Now, um, how can we reduce your total cost of ownership? Well, RSA Archer is a very, very complicated tool, okay? It's often used for more than the purpose that you bought it for. You can expand the use cases internally with trained people without relying on expensive or additional third-party consultants, outside firms, uh, bringing that kind of uh, external knowledge in at a cost. It helps you get to grips with the tool much more quickly, meaning you can get up to speed with it much sooner. And then those people who are trained, they can share that knowledge internally to get your user base up to speed. Much faster than uh, if you just try and figure it out yourself. It also means you can realize the full potential of RSA Archer and use it to save your money elsewhere. All right, RSA Archer 
can replace many other tools that you use in your day-to-day -day business. Right? These tools aren't free. They have uh, high annual maintenance costs, reoccurring uh, licensing fees, uh, client seat licensing, that kind of thing. Okay, By um, onboarding that data set into RSA Archer, you can turn them off, save yourself a lot of money, reducing your total cost of ownership, and um, everybody's happy. Now, um, we have a number of offerings that uh, can help you if you are budget conscious. Um, obviously, you can take your a la, la carte as required. You can browse our, um, uh, our published uh, schedule of courses to, for, the, uh, for the rest of the year, and you can pick and choose there. Um, but if you're worried about budget for travel, um, you can have us come to you. Okay, we can come onto your premise, use one of your meeting rooms or, or a space big enough to seat the number of people. And obviously, you're going to save money there because you don't have to pay for your staff to stay in hotels. You don't have to pay for your staff for having flights, train fares or whatever, or mileage claims and meals and things like that. We can just come to you, save you a whole load of money. Uh, another option is our on-demand subscription service. Okay, so you can purchase a license to use all the training uh, for a particular product, and uh, that includes access to uh, training materials, lab environments, uh, and it's just got a low, a low one-off fee of five thousand dollars. So the second objection: I don't have the time. Busy. Snow Dunder. Well, you're not going to be snowed under forever. So what you can do is you can look at the uh, schedule and book a training class that's out in the future on a time when you know a current project is going to end or, you know, when there's some downtime for uh, user acceptance testing, for example, for, for, for the piece of software you're working with. And then you can sneak off onto um, an Archer, RSA Archer course while they're doing their UAT testing, and then you will be trained. And when you get back, you can deal with the snag list that your UAT testing provided, but now at least you have another skill under your belt. We offer courses worldwide, all over the planet. We, we travel all over the world, COVID accepted. Uh, so there's always going to be training somewhere near you, okay? Um, we can also um, come to you as I've already mentioned. If that's no good, then you can do uh, virtual training. So like I'm sharing my screen with you guys now when I'm running through a PowerPoint presentation, we also do the demonstrations and you can ask questions in real time and things like that. Okay, so it's identical to an in-person class, except you're sitting at home or in your office and you can uh, schedule it to fit your needs because we run them in different time zones. So if you work a nine to five, you could find a class that runs, you know, um, maybe east of your location so that it's earlier in the morning. You could just get up early and, and do a session and then go to work. Or you could find a class that's west of your location and um, do a full day's work and then sit in the class in the afternoon or the evening. Whatever fits your schedule, we can figure it out. And, you know, um, we're not averse to dropping the odd uh, dad joke here and there to uh, make sure that your attention is peaked and that you're uh, not falling asleep at your desk. Finally, we have on-demand training. Okay, these are pre-recorded sessions with an instructor. It's the exact same material as the in-person or the virtual courses, uh, with a bonus that there are some additional topics that are not taught by live instructors that are available to everybody that you can kind of expand your horizon, your learning. All these are available to you. Let's have a look at objection number three. It's unnecessary. We don't need it. We're clever people. We'll figure it out. Yeah, probably. But it'll take you longer. And what you won't learn is best practice. Okay. Most of us instructors, we come from a professional service background. We've made the mistakes in the real world, and we show you in the classroom how to avoid those. Bear in mind that new technology requires new skills. Now, you're right, you can self-learn them, but 
it takes longer, as I said. Carl's parents didn't feel that way until they had to buy a new VCR. Okay, they thought they didn't need to do training, it was unnecessary, they could just tell Carl to leave it alone, and we all know how that turned out. Driver's education is a must. We've all got um, kids. Uh, my 16 year old recently just passed her driving test. I, I, I put her through professional driving tuition. All right, the reason was I didn't want her to crash my car. More importantly, I didn't want her to crash someone else's car, uh, cause injury. Uh, damage to personal property. Okay, the, we all put our kids through some kind of driver training, whether it's us passing on our knowledge or if it's a professional driving scheme. A lot of countries out there, the professional training is mandated. Okay, so if we're going to do that with our kids in cars, why would we let people loose on our technology without any training? Okay, RSA Archer contains sensitive data. All right, it contains intellectual property, it contains financial records, it contains evidence of compliance. Now, correctly trained individuals will promote security and safeguard that data, upholding the fundable, fund, fundamental principles of security as described in the AIC triad of availability, integrity, and confidentiality. Well-trained administrators for RSA Archer will greatly reduce the need for any external help after your implementation, again reducing your total cost of ownership. Let's have a look at objection number four. I don't learn that way. I hear this one a lot. I don't know if you know this, but there are three learning styles. Okay. We have a number of methodologies to suit whatever your learning style is, but the hard part is knowing what that is. Unless you're very lucky in school and you had a very uh, exceptional teacher who identified your learning style, you're not going to know what it is. The world is made up of three types of people when it comes to learning things. The first type is visual learners. If they see something, they can do it. Makes up about one third of the world's population. Auditory learners, they listen. No, 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 just tell me. Got it, and off they go. Again, they make up one third of the population. And then the other third is made up by kinesthetic people. They're the touchy-feely people. No, no, uh, show me. Let me have a go. How was that? Got it. Okay. Um, I, this was explained to me in a, in a HR thing that I went to. And um, the way she explained it to me was job interview. you got a job interview tomorrow. Okay. And you need the directions to get to the office where the interview is. Uh, a visual learner will look at a map. Got it. Drive to the place tomorrow. Auditory learners will say, um, hi, can you uh, give me the directions? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Got it. And they will turn up at the interview tomorrow. Kinesthetic learners will Google Maps it, ask for directions on the phone, and then do a dry run the night before. That's what I used to do. Okay? Um, they're, they're the touchy-feely people. Now, we recognize these three styles and we've addressed them with our offerings, okay? So take a moment to look at this screen. Pause if you need to, but read through. I think you might be surprised. Many of us have no idea what our learning style is. It's not something that schools have the skills or uh, the time to identify. Now, as I said before, if you're lucky and you had an exceptional or skilled teacher, they may have pointed it out to you. But once you know your learning style and choose the right offering to meet your style, 
you'll be amazed at how much more knowledge you've retained, how much longer you'll retain that knowledge for. Okay. You can't put square pegs in round holes. All right. Visual people can't, can't be talked to. Auditory people can't be shown. Kinesthetic people need to get their hands dirty. All right. It could be that for all your life, you've been uh, pushed into a learning style that just doesn't work for you. And so as a result of that, you haven't retained anything. You found the whole thing boring and you didn't want to do it again. Why would you? So for visual learners, we've got the student materials. We've got, um, they're yours to keep. You can revisit them. I always say keep them, use them as an aid memoir in the future. Okay. Um, when we're talking in class, we have a slide deck. It's got visuals and text. Um, you can just tune us out. It's not unusual for my visual learners to uh, pop in some earbuds or noise cancelling headphones and just some smooth jazz or something in the background. Just something that doesn't need concentration to listen to so that they can tune the instructor out and the rest of the class and just pay attention to the, the written word and the diagrams and what's on the screen in front of them. If you're auditory, okay, it, it, there's nothing stopping you just staring at a poster on the wall and listening to what's being said. Everything that's on the slides is is spoken about. And uh, as we do demonstrations, we talk about what we're doing at each step. Um, if, it's, uh, if you've chosen the on-demand learning path, you can replay the recordings as often as you want during your a lot of time frame. And for kinesthetic learners, all of that, and on top of that, hands-on, and on top of that, you know, our, me and my fellow instructors will whiteboard anything you want. If you're having trouble uh, understanding something, I, I am fully into analogies, all right? Uh, I will analogize any way, which way you want until it's understood, all right? I'm kinesthetic, so I understand the struggle, and I want you to leave knowing something. And then most of the teachings are backed up by interactive labs anyway, so you're going to get your hands dirty. Some additional thoughts for you, okay? Investing in your people, if you're a manager, at least a happier and more stable team, okay? Show this to your managers if they're not watching this. Training leads to employee retention. This is a known fact, okay? Skill renewal, okay? According to LinkedIn Learning, the average shelf life of any skill that you learn is five years. Using RSA Archer uh, versions 6.1 to 6.8, just as an example, there have been several major improvements and new features available to end users and administrators alike and our curriculum is always being updated to incorporate that. Employee retention. It is a proven fact that people leave jobs for one of three reasons. All right. Stagnant pay, bad managers, or lack of promotion. They're the three things. All right. Skill training can lead to something called job enrichment, which is where you get more things to do or job replacement, which is where you get a different role. Okay. So they can be construed as promotion or they can be physical promotions. Promotions can lead to pay increases for more responsibility, more duties. They can also get you moved into a different department or above or next to a manager that you previously had that you didn't like. So that removes that obstacle to your life. And so with skills training, pay is no longer stagnant because the earning potential is there to uh, earn more because they can demonstrate more, more skills, therefore take on more responsibility and more responsibility comes with usually better pay. Uh, usually any kind of promotion will get them away from bad manager. And, uh, you know, it's a promotion and that's what people want. They want career path. They want advancement. And that's what makes people stay. Not only that, but it is widely acknowledged that 
training increases an employee's loyalty to the employer. Organizations that invest in uh, training make their participants, your staff, feel like insiders. This is the sense of being an insider in the company, and this is displayed in more exertion and, and, a, and a higher output and, and a deeper work ethic. All right, it's, it's proven. Um, here's a slide with some references on. Um, you'll notice that they're numbered throughout the um, presentation. Other than that, I just want to say uh, thank you. And um, yeah, any questions?